is an age-old question that comes up all the time. Which one is better, Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign? Now, it doesn't matter what you're doing, each of them has different purposes and for the most part, uh, they're very different in that one is going to help you achieve one goal and the other one will help you achieve a very different goal. So let's talk about that today and which one I would recommend and which one I would not recommend. I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads to help them attract more clients and customers. Now, if this is something that you think you might be interested in or that fits you, then make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. Now, today we're talking about whether or not to use Microsoft Word versus Adobe InDesign. And I remember thinking when I first was trying to make a decision because I'm also an author and I I write books, I write fiction books, I write nonfiction books, I write digital downloads, and before I really learned in design, I did a lot of research and the answer is kind of varied. So, if you are, and I'm splitting everybody into two different populations. Now, if you are an author, you are writing a book, whether that is for Kindle, that is for um, CreateSpace, or Ingram Spark, or Barnes & Noble, or any of those major publishing um, sort of, warehouses, let's say storefronts, then you for sure need to use a two-step process. First, you should write your document in Microsoft Word or Scrivener or Vellum or whatever sort of book editing software that you would like to do so because you probably have chapters and those need to be organized. And maybe you have some end notes if you are writing a um, nonfiction book or you have a resource section or something else. Now, you are probably going to have changes. You're going to send that to your developmental editor, you're going to send that to a copy editor, you're going to send it to a proofreader, you're going to, going to send that to beta readers, and they are going to have changes. And for sure, I shouldn't say for sure, but most likely they're not going to have Adobe InDesign to make those edits for you. You will want to send them that document in Microsoft Word so they can turn on track changes and make comments and edits for you. Now, once you have your final, final document, I mean, there's absolutely no changes at all, then then I would take that Word document and I would import it into Adobe InDesign so that then you can have a pretty layout. Now, you could skip that all together if you are publishing and you're an author and you're not really going to have a lot of fancy layouts or you're not going to add pictures. But if you're making something like, let's say, a cookbook or a children's book, which has a lot of pictures, then you might want to just go ahead and create that first in Adobe InDesign because it has a um, a better ability to do layouts. And I know what you're thinking, hey Lisa, I can put pictures in Microsoft Word and I can format it such that I have my text underneath it. And that is correct, you could do that, but you'll notice Microsoft Word, sometimes when I open the document, it will have the picture on the left one day and then it will have it on the right another day. And Microsoft Word just has the prerogative to make changes like that. Or if you change one thing in page 10, it has an avalanche effect all throughout the rest of your document, thereby offsetting everything. And that does not happen in InDesign. Now, if you are going to not be an author and you're simply someone making workbooks, you're making, let's say, a very lengthy book, but maybe it is not a, you know, 80,000 word novel, then you're better off starting in doing two things, doing InDesign, but also also doing your proofreading inside Microsoft Word. And here's the reason why. If you've ever tried to use spell check in InDesign, they do have it, but it doesn't really work. Just kind of like how Microsoft has formatting, it does, but it doesn't really work. So if you think that if you have any text, what you can do is you can take all of your text from Adobe InDesign and you can put it in Microsoft Word, make sure it's spell check correctly, and then import it back into InDesign. Design. You can use text overflow to go from one page to the next. So you just enter it once and it's done. You don't have to copy and paste through all the pages. Now, this is a specific skill you will have to know how to use inside Adobe InDesign so you don't end up copying and pasting a million pages. Uh, but for sure, you are not going to be doing any sort of editing or proofreading inside Adobe InDesign except for a final proof at the end. Now, 
if you are going to um, have any sort of collaboration with somebody else, again, I think Microsoft Word, because it can track changes, is much better for you, especially if you're changing a lot of text. Um, I think another thing, I wrote some notes, is that the, uh, the colors. So you have to think about the RGB versus CMYK, and if you're not familiar with that, I'll give you a quick lesson. RGB is simply if you are only going to have this as a digital book, right? It is only going to be viewed on a device and a, an electronic screen. It is at no time going to be printed, at which point if you're send something, sending something to the printers, you will want to have it in CMYK because just like we said, you know, you've looked at something sometimes on one monitor and over on another monitor, it's bright blue here and it's dark blue over there. The same exact thing is going to happen when you go to print, but it will be bright blue on your monitor and dark blue when it comes out of your printer because the printer reads CMYK color and it does not read RGB colors. Other reason you want to do some of your final formatting inside Adobe InDesign, especially if you have a smaller document, is those drop caps. So the drop caps are so pretty, right? It's what makes magazine articles seem more interesting. It breaks up text. You cannot do those drop, drop caps inside Microsoft Word. The same thing with pictures. Laying, just like I said before, doing a picture layout will, wherever you put that picture inside InDesign, it will stay. Wherever you put that picture inside Microsoft Word, good luck finding it later. Also, you're able to wrap text around the images inside Adobe InDesign such that it could go, if my hand was here and this was a piece, this was a page in InDesign, I could have the words kind of go around it. So the words come here and then they jump over here, they come here, they jump over here, or I could have them go just on this side and have another text bubble inside of here. You can't do that inside of Adobe InDesign, or inside of Microsoft Word. We learn, if you have a book that is primarily text and you're printing straight to Kindle or straight to ebook for Barnes & Noble, then you can create that entire thing in Microsoft Word and simply have, or, or Scrivener or Vellum and have it converted there into the format that they require. Now, if you are writing a book that is something that has more pictures and a little bit more styling, such as a cookbook or a children's book or maybe a magazine type of layout, then Adobe InDesign is the way to go. And we also learn number three, which is a combination because the spell check inside Adobe InDesign is not going to help you at all in terms of helping you proofread your document. And you want to do all of that inside of Microsoft Word and then import that Word file back into Adobe InDesign. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if you guys want to see a tutorial on how to import Word into Adobe InDesign, let me know, it's really easy. I can show you next time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below and I will see you guys next week. Bye.